in the 21st century, what is it that shapes opinions and influences decisions? When it comes to politics, the idea is fairly simple. Ethics take a backseat. Leaders present the narrative as the ultimate truth, supported by twisted facts and dubious sources. In this age of fake narratives and deception that has tried to influence India and her people, how is misinformation being used as a tool to demolish the trust people have in their government? Namaskar and welcome to New India Junction. I am Richa Devedi and this is The Bottom Line. Over the last few years, we have grown used to ruckus and chaos in the Indian parliament. Almost always, it is India's grand old party that leads this chaos. But somehow, we see no concrete action. Like clockwork, the parliament is stalled. News channels and social media run wild with theories. But once the issue is investigated, suddenly, everything goes quiet. That is, of course, until the next issue goes through the same cycle. This modus operandi has now become obvious for all to see, and yet it continues. You must remember Pegasus, not the mythical horse, but the software. In 2021, the parliament was stalled and an investigation was demanded. Remember leaders from Congress screaming that they were victims of snooping? that they could prove Pegasus was on their phones. Pegasus, which is called software, snooping software, is a threat. Our Pradhan Mantri and our Home Minister have used this threat to Hindustan's institutions, to Hindustan's people. His phone was tapped. He has done a very bad thing. इनके मोबाइल पर पेगासिस लगा है आधार उनको सदन में रजू करना चाहिए मत ऐसे नहीं बोल सकते आप या तो ये शब्द निकाल दिए जाए या तो वो आधार रजू कर या हरकत इनके पास एक भी आधार हो किसी की पत्रकार का नेता का उनके खुद का यहाँ रखना चाहिए सदन पर but for the last two years nothing to be fair it isn't as if nothing has happened Right after the issue was raised and then taken to the Supreme Court, all on the basis of unverified reports by biased media channels, a committee was appointed to examine the issue. Of the 50,000 numbers that were spied upon, do you know how many actually submitted their phones for inspection? 29. Of the 29, do you remember how many had traces of Pegasus? Shunya. And just like the issue was suddenly conjured up from thin air, in thin air, it has since vanished. Why not submit your phones when you were so sure that it had Pegasus on it? Was there something else on the phones that these leaders and eminent personalities did not want the authorities to examine? What about the Rafale jets, which are the pride of the Indian Air Force and will soon be? for the Indian Navy as well. As per the same grand old party and its scion, Rahul Gandhi, the Rafale jets were purchased at inflated prices with rampant corruption in the deal with Dassault Aviation of France. The Hawaii Jaws of 526 crore rupees to 1600 crore rupees. decision? Ignoring the fact that this was the party responsible for corruption scandals for the purchase of jeeps, Beaufort's guns, Augusta Westland helicopters and Scorpion submarines. Let us look at some facts. Mr. Gandhi said the French authorities also colluded with the Indian government and called it an instance of globalized corruption. He even accused the Raksha Mantri of trying to close the deal hurriedly 
when the latter was on a routine visit to France. So, the government, keeping with its vision of 100% transparency, submitted all documents for review by the Supreme Court of India. Just like Pegasus, there were no irregularities found in the deal. In fact, it noted that there was a financial advantage to India. The now disqualified member of parliament who had made the Rafale deal a cornerstone of his party's election campaign had to tender an unconditional apology to the apex court. And just like that, another issue simply vanished. Now I'm sure you remember several leaders from the same party staging a dharna on the parliament premises in protest of inflation. They held everyday items like milk packets and vegetable bags in their hands, refused to cooperate and forced yet another log jam in the parliament. This was August 2022 and the inflation was at around 7%, which is above the RBI's comfortable limit, but definitely manageable. Remember, 2022 was the same year when even as the world was emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns, the Russia-Ukraine conflict had again disrupted supply chains, causing prices to rise sharply over the next seven to eight months. I can say that because the year ended with 6.7% and for the month of June 2023, inflation stood at 4.8%. And for May 2023, it was 4.3%. Comparatively, in 2022, inflation stood at 19.9% for Pakistan, 15.9% for Russia, 7.9% for the UK, 8% for the USA, 6.9% for Germany, and around 64% for Argentina. Which means we were truly a bright spot for the global economy. Overall, in the last nine years of the Modi government, inflation has averaged less than 4.8%. But between 2006 and 2014, it was 8.7% since it remained in double digits for three years, even crossing the 12% mark in 2010. And again, for the last six to eight months, we haven't heard anything about inflation from the Congress or its leaders. Convenient, isn't it? For the Congress, maybe, but for India and her people, definitely not. The impact of such fake narratives is profound. They can shape public discourse, erode trust in institutions, and distort the information landscape. By preying on people's emotions, these narratives seek to manipulate voters' choices and undermine the democratic process. We have seen how these false narratives can influence people's decisions and force them to make decisions based on false or incomplete information, leading to the election of candidates who care only for their individual interests and not the aspirations of the Indian people. You must also remember how the Congress vehemently supported the BBC when an inspection of its offices was done by the Income Tax Department only because it had come out with a propaganda-filled series to defame the Indian Prime Minister. The Congress added everything to its baseless allegations against the government. Words like free speech, authoritarianism and excesses were thrown around like candy. But do you remember anything it said on tax evasion? But a few months later, when the BBC admitted to duping India's revenue department of over 40 crore rupees by underreporting its income, the Congress not only abandoned the BBC, but began raising yet another non-issue. Be it Chinese aggression on the border, NEET PG exams, the National Herald case or farmers' rights, they are all important issues only as long as they serve the purposes of one party. After that, they seem to be discarded faster than the plastic packaging around a bag of chips.
Is it okay to mislead the people of India for your convenience? Is it not throttling Indian democracy when the parliament is held hostage because one party requires political mileage? What will be the next non-issue they create and discard as the 2024 general elections approach? You decide.